Hello, and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are going to be introducing our super cute new set, Spooky Village, and its coordinating dies. We're also going to be introducing our new Happy Halloween line border, and our new color of lawn trimmings cord. It's a beautiful purple called eggplant. So first, let's take a look at our Happy Halloween line border. So I love this die cut because it creates this really cool, bold sentiment that's perfect for easily adding to cards. And I just love the cute little skinny lines of it. it just looks adorable. And then this is the eggplant lawn trimmings. So the lawn trimmings are really cool because they come in this package where the twine actually spins on it. So you can just spin a piece off just like that and trim it off. This twine is actually made out of hemp, which makes it super sturdy. And one thing that I love about it is that it's really great for forming bows because that extra sturdiness that it has keeps those little bow ends, those little bow loops looking really, really cute. So here you can see how adorable a little bow out of these lawn trimmings comes out. Of, and I love that we now have this great purple color. Now it's time to start stamping. So here we have our first set of houses in Spooky Village and I love the little triple set of houses. Here's a single house with a little jack-o-lantern out front and then two different kind of haunted looking houses. The little tiny trick-or-treaters and tiny pumpkin patch are my favorite. They're so cute. We also have two trees, a larger one and a smaller one that are super cute for scenes. I love the cloud and the moon and then the separate cloud and stars for creating a really cool Halloween sky. We have a spooky fence that you can put behind the houses and then two bats in two different sizes. We have a separate jack-o-lantern and a separate ghost so that you can help set the scene and I love that solid star too. We have these phrases trick or treat or eek and then these other great sentiments ghostly greetings, happy Halloween, have a spooktacular day, from our patch to yours, and then here you can see that word bubble from the original Happy Village stamp set. Those little eek and trick or treat fit in that bubble too. And of course we have an exclamation point to add to the ends of the phrases. We're gonna be using Copic markers to add some color to these fun images. So this spooky village is the next in our village series. So we have our happy village, our winter village, our village shops, and now this awesome spooky village. And I just adore these houses. So I'm coloring these houses like Audrey did from the design team. And I love that she used Halloween colors like green and purple, but she used muted versions of them, more of like an olive and a bluey purple. And so it's spooky Halloween, but it still looks really, really great with these houses. Houses. And these houses are so much fun to color because you can get really imaginative with them. So now that I've got the olive green and kind of that bluey purple color, we're going to start coloring in the doors and the roofs with some warm grays. And I like that those warm grays look nice with both of the colors. So we've added shadow here kind of on the outside of the roofs and then we're making them lighter towards the inside. And then for the houses, the shadow part is kind of lining the outside edge of the houses. And I think that's a really, really cool look. I love how Audrey colors them that way. It really makes those houses pop and these colors together is something I never would have picked. So I love taking a look at what my friends do and getting inspired by it and kind of learning something new about coloring by kind of emulating what they've done. So now that we're going to add some color to that cute jack-o-lantern, we can move on to our other house. So this house here, I thought it would be fun to go totally different, and we're going to be doing kind of a bright bluey green color, kind of a dark teal turquoise color on this house. And I think it's really cool that you can play around with these houses. So it's more of a normal colored house because it's not quite as haunted. It's just got the little jack-o-lantern in front. And then we're going to repeat the same style of coloring, but this time with some neutral grays that I thought looked really nice with that blue color. Next up, we're going to be doing something really cool that Shari taught me. So to get kind of a spooky color on the house, we're going to start with a really bright color. So we've got this bright turquoise color. We're just going to color one layer. Then we're going to take a warm gray marker, the W1, so a nice light gray marker. We're going to lay it over that turquoise and then lay a little bit more turquoise on top and kind of go back and forth between the two of them. It's created this really kind of spooky color and the house almost looks dirty, which I think is really cool because it really adds to that haunted element. I also think that this would look pretty on other types of houses too because it looks a little bit more like a house color that's kind of gotten a little bit, the paint's gotten dirty over time. It looks really, really cool. And I love that it just took two markers, one turquoise and one gray and just layering them back and forth. I decided I wanted the house to be even dirtier. So I took a W2 marker, so just a little bit darker, and we're just gonna layer that right along the bottom parts of the two house pieces. And you can see how that's added even more of like a spooky texture to the house. 
Now for this last one, I wanted to go with the traditional Halloween purple. So we're doing purple on there and then some warm grays for the roof and kind of the whole detail pieces. And I love that this is more of kind of like a traditional Halloween house. Now the other thing we're gonna be doing here is instead of using yellows for the glow in the window, we're gonna be going more towards oranges. And Carolina here at the office did that on one of her cards and I thought it looked so cool and it looked even spookier for Halloween. And I love that it also brings in that orange, which is that traditional Halloween color. So you can see that orange glow and how cool it is. Now for these tiny little things, I'm doing very limited shading here. So I've got two markers there. It looks like I brought a third one in just to add a little bit of lightness to the top of those pumpkins. But now for the little tiny trick-or-treaters, I'm not shading at all. I'm just using one color for each element. So I've just got one for each one and then coloring them in. And they are just so cute and they're super fun to color too. Now we're finishing up the tiny pumpkin patch and then our little gravestones there. We're just gonna blend those out with a colorless blender. And then for the clouds, normally I line clouds in a light blue color, but in this case, I did them in a warm gray color to give them more of a spooky look instead of a summertime look. And I am just in love with how these turned out. It was so much fun to color. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to hear what you guys think about coloring these houses. So here we've got the coordinating dies, and you can bend these apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate them. Then you can take that die and line it up with your stamped image. Once it's lined up, I like to hold it in place with some low tack tape. I'm using post-it note tape, but something like washi tape would work too. We'll run that through the die cut machine, and now we'll have some perfectly die cut images, and I just love seeing them pop out of the die. I never get over how cool that is. So here are all of the images from the set and you can see how there's so many little things that are perfect for creating scenes. So you can mix and match them in different ways, layering the fence behind the houses, moving your pumpkin patch or trick-or-treaters around. You could even do one long line of houses or just a single house in the center. But now we're gonna be creating four different cards with this set and we're gonna be starting off with that trio of houses, some spooky fences, and then some clouds and moon for the sky. So I always like to take my pieces, once they're stamped and colored, I put them in a little bowl and put them aside so they're nice and safe. And here I have a stitched rectangle and we're gonna die cut some white cardstock and we're gonna be doing some inking with Distress Oxide inks. We're gonna be using my new favorite blender brushes. We're gonna pick up a little bit of ink with that blender brush, kind of going in a circle. Then we're gonna start off of the cardstock and move onto the cardstock and build that color up. So we're gonna have a blue going in to purple here. So you'll see we'll build that color up and then we'll switch over to our purple, kind of the brighter purple, and then going into the darker purple so that there's really cool gradient. We're gonna switch back and forth between each of those colors, going over the areas where they meet so that it's a nice blend and then there's no harsh edge. Now that that's all blended, we're gonna be adding some texture in three different ways. So we're gonna be starting off with a spray bottle that's filled with plain water. And we're just gonna spray that onto this cardstock and the water is gonna react with that ink. I also like to take a paper towel and just pick up any of the excess and you can see how cool that's looking and it's kind of spooky. Next up, we have a new product, which is Liquid Stardust, and it's this really cool liquid sparkly stuff. So I'm gonna add some water to that just a little bit, and we're gonna mix that together, and I'm gonna pick it up with a paintbrush and then tap the paintbrush to create splatters. The water is gonna react with the ink, and then that sparkle stuff is gonna add this really cool glitter within that water. It's a gorgeous look, because you have kind of this spooky, glittery sky. Then to finish it off, the stars need to be added. So we're gonna take some gold watercolor here, add a little bit of water to it, kind of get it going, pick it up with that same paintbrush, tap the edge of the paintbrush again, and splatter that gold all over the cardstock. That's gonna create more colors of stars. So now we have our plain water, our sparkly water, and then the gold. And you can see how gorgeous this is. There's so much texture and sparkle to it. It's perfect for Halloween. We're recreating a card by Audrey right now, and one of the things that I loved is she brought back the cute cobweb die, which is such a great die, and we're gonna die cut four of those from black cardstock. And we're gonna be layering black cardstock on black cardstock, and it's such a cool look. I would have never thought of doing it, and I think it's so awesome. So here we're creating a card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter out of some black licorice cardstock, and then we're gonna add our cute cobwebs into the four different corners. So I'm just adding a little drops of glue there with the glue tube, and we're we're gonna layer those into the corner and you can see how that black cardstock on black cardstock is just subtle but gorgeous. It adds the most amazing texture to it. 
now we can start working on our scene. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out that awesome sky that we created earlier and we're gonna die cut some black cardstock with the same size stitched rectangle. Then we're gonna take a simple stitched hillside border here and we're gonna die cut a hill for our house to be on. Once we have that all die cut, we can start working on the seam. So we're gonna attach that hill down with some tape runner, and then we're gonna attach our other elements with some foam squares to kind of help them pop up off of that busy sky. We're gonna add the spooky fence with tape runner so it kind of looks like it's in the background, and we're gonna be tucking that behind the house so that it really looks like a continuous fence behind the house, which is a really, really cute look. Once we've added all of our elements into the sky, then we're gonna take some foam squares and add it to the back of this whole scene and add that onto the card base so that it has a nice pop off of our cool cobwebs that we created earlier. I wanted to make sure I kept everything black, so we're gonna be doing some white heat embossing onto our sentiment banner. So we're gonna stamp out the Happy Halloween in some clear embossing ink. We'll add some white heat embossing powder to that and just tap off any of the excess. Then we can heat that up with a heat gun and we'll have a nice bright white shiny sentiment, which is really, really cool. And then we're gonna take one of these sentiment banners dies, and these are my favorite. I love them for adding sentiments. We're gonna line that up with the Happy Halloween, hold it in place with some tape, run it through the die cut machine and now we have a perfect banner. We'll add some foam squares to that and we can layer that right onto the hill. And now this card is done and it is so super cute. I love that bold sky and the really cool way the houses are colored and all of the sparkle that came from the liquid stardust mixed with that gold watercolor. Oh my goodness, it's just so much fun. Now, when I was creating this card, I had created another background that I didn't like as much, so I ended up making two of them. Then I looked back at it and I was like, wait, this looks really cool. Why am I not using this? So I decided to take some of the elements that were already on my desk just from playing around and creating the first card and use them to make a second card with a similar idea. So in this case, I've die cut two hills because I want to add some of those trick-or-treaters and things in. And instead of stamping onto a banner, this time what we're going to do is we're going to stamp directly onto the hill. So I wanted my sentiment to be stacked here. So I'm just taking my scissors and cutting my stamps apart. I love doing this because now I can stack my sentiment or I can go back and put it straight because you can line them up just like little puzzle pieces if you want it to be a long sentiment again. So I'm gonna stamp in that clear ink again and use my white heat embossing powder again because it was already out of my desk. So making this second card took no time at all because all of my elements were already there and ready for me to use. And I need to remember this in the future when I've already got something going, I should just make two backgrounds because I can make two cards at once. So we're gonna layer that second hill on with some foam squares and now we're gonna layer the rest of our elements onto the card. So we have our spooky haunted house and those trick-or-treaters that are my favorite and we're gonna line them up with the hill so they're kind of going up the hill and the pumpkin patch is gonna be lined up so it looks like it's going down the hill. Then we're gonna add those spooky trees in the background this time instead of doing the fence, which I think is really cute. And then instead of the clouds this time, we're gonna add the bats, which is really fun, especially around that haunted house. I wanted to do that same black on black cardstock technique, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. So here we're creating a card base again, and I've also die cut the snowy backdrop out of some black cardstock. So we're gonna take that liquid stardust that we used to create the sky and use it in a different way. So I'm just gonna put it onto that black cardstock and take a paper towel and smear it across the whole black cardstock. That's gonna create a really, really cool shiny black cardstock. Now you don't need to worry if it doesn't look quite perfect because we're gonna be layering our backdrop there right on top. So once we layer that on top, we're gonna to be seeing that shiny cardstock through the star pieces. So there'll be a little extra something to it, but it still has that black on black cardstock look of the first card. Then to finish it up, all we have to do is just add some foam squares to the scene and layer that on top. And so I love this because that background is super cool. I love that sparkly stuff that's just shining through the stars. It's a really fun way to use that awesome liquid stardust. And look how shiny and cool that is. I love it so much. So we've taken two cards here, one with this kind of black on black cardstock design in that cool sky and created something really similar to it. So I love the idea of from one card, we got a whole different design. Next, we're gonna be recreating a card by Yanea that is so cute, and we're gonna start off by die-cutting our stitched hillside backdrop out of some black cardstock. 
Now to make these hills even spookier, we're gonna be using some white pigment ink. So that's our Yeti pigment ink. And we're gonna be using one of those cool blender brushes again. So this is just a piece of computer paper. We're just gonna tuck it behind that first hill to protect the second one. And we're gonna be adding on a little bit of that white ink to the top of the hills. And we're gonna be brushing that down almost up and down instead of in circles so that it gives it kind of this cool eerie look coming down like there's a glow from the moon. So we're gonna layer that onto the first hill. And then once we're done with the first hill, we're gonna work on the second one. So we can pull out that computer paper and then layer it behind the second hill just to protect the work surface and start bringing that color on. Now here we're going kind of in a circular motion because it's a bit of a bigger area. And then on the shorter area, we're gonna go down in those streaks again. And you can see how cool and spooky and how that's really defined the background. So now we've taken a circle die and we've die cut some masking paper. You could also die cut a full stick post-it and we've created a moon with this. So we're gonna take that masking paper and we're gonna lay that on the background here for this sky. And that's gonna be protecting that area from our Distress Oxide inks. So this is some Peacock Feathers ink and I love the idea of using this dark turquoise teal color as a spooky sky for Halloween. So we're gonna start in the center of that moon and then move out into the sky, building the color up. But once again, it's staying white behind that masking paper to give us a really cool glowing moon. Now to add that glow from the moon coming out to the sky, just like we did on the hills, we're gonna be using that Yeti pigment ink again, starting out from the moon and then going out into the sky. And that white ink is gonna cover up the distress oxide and make it look like there's a glow. Then from there, we can start filling in the rest of the sky, kind of darker up into the corners, and then layer some more of that white ink on there to really create that glow of the moon. Then to add a little spookiness, we're gonna take some black soot ink and layer that just around the edges. And you can see once you add that black ink, it really creates the whole sky and really makes it kind of cool and spooky. So now as we remove the moon, you're gonna see how cool this look. That white ink is the perfect, perfect way to get the cool moon glow over any color of sky, even if you did a purple sky or an orange sky or anything like that. We're gonna be using that liquid stardust again here. So we're gonna put a little bit onto an acrylic block. Then we can pick up some water, just some clean water with the paintbrush and mix it in with that liquid stardust. Then we can pick that up and once again, we're gonna be splattering onto the sky to create really cool stars and also have that water react with the Distress Oxide inks. So we've picked up some of that ink and now we're just gonna tap that paintbrush and splatter. Because this is a tiny paintbrush, you're gonna get tiny little spots, which looks really, really beautiful in this sky. I love that they're going on the moon too because it kind of gives that almost like the craters of the moon look. So now that we've got our stars in the sky, we can start working on the scene. And these are our The Birch Trees dies, die cut from some storm cloud cardstock. And we're gonna layer those in the background. And I love how it looks partially layering over the moon. Once we've added the third tree, we can go ahead and trim off any of the excess and then start to layer our scene onto the card base. So this is a five and a half by four and a quarter inch card base. We're gonna layer our whole spooky sky on there and then we'll add some liquid glue to the back of our spooky hills and layer those on top. And you can see just how gorgeous this is looking. I just love the idea of that turquoise sky for a spooky Halloween card. Now to decorate, we're gonna start using some of these spooky village houses, and these have all been colored with that warm gray technique. So use different colors of markers like reds and greens and purples, but we added the warm gray marker over top to give it that spooky kind of dirty house look. So you can take any color of marker, add the warm gray on top, and get a totally different look out of all of your different colors. So we're gonna keep layering these pieces, some of them with foam squares, some with some glue tubes, some tucked behind the hills, and some in front. And then we've got a banner here cut from some peacock cardstock. We're gonna stamp in that clear ink again, and we're gonna white heat emboss on that. And the sentiment says ghostly greetings, which is super, super cute for this fun, spooky scene. We can heat that up with our heat tool and then add some foam squares to the back and layer that into the scene right over the moon. 
Then for a finishing touch, we're gonna take the two different sizes of bats in the set and stamp those in black ink all over the sky. And I love how they're partially overlaying the moon and partially overlaying the sky, and some of them are directly on the moon. It really helps fill in the scene and looks absolutely gorgeous. And so now this super cute card is all done. I love the technique of the white ink over an ink background. It gives the coolest spooky glow that I am just in love with. So next up, we're gonna be using the four square backdrop die, and we're gonna be die cutting that out of some storm cloud cardstock, which is a really beautiful gray. We're also gonna be using the new fall fling paper, and there's this really gorgeous orange leaf paper, which I just love because it almost looks like leaves are falling in the sky. So we're gonna pull that paper out, and then we'll trim that down with the largest of the stitched rectangles to layer behind our four square backdrop. So we're gonna add some tape runner to the back of the pattern paper, and then we can add some liquid glue to our four square backdrop and layer that on top. This is a super quick and easy way to fill in your skies in the four different scenes by just using some pattern paper. So this card is super quick and easy. Then next we get to start forming our scenes. And one of the reasons I love the four square backdrop is it gives you four little mini areas to fill in. So it's almost like creating your own little comic book strip or something. So we're gonna take a bunch of those die cut pieces and just mix and match them in the scenes until we like how those look. I really like how that pumpkin patch is kind of overlaying over the divider between the two scenes on the bottom. That's a really, really cool look too. Now once everything is in perfect placement, we can pick up each of those, add a little liquid with glue and start layering them onto the card. Once everything is attached, it's time to add a little glitter. So we have a brand new glitter pen that adds kind of a little subtle shimmer to things and it has a bullet marker nib so that it's really easy to color in tiny things like those little stars and moon and clouds. So now that we've added glitter to our scene, it's time to add glitter to the sentiment. So we're gonna be using that Happy Halloween line border and we're gonna be die cutting that out of some of the sparkle cardstock that comes in the autumn pack. And you can see how gorgeous this delicate die cut looks cut out of this paper. So we'll add some liquid glue there to the back of the sentiment and then we can layer that right along the bottom area of the die cut. Then we can just snip off any of the excess. So this card is super cute and super easy to put together by layering pattern paper as our sky. And I love that it looks like the leaves are falling down onto these super cute Halloween houses. Next up, we have some gorgeous cards by the design team. And first up, we have that beautiful card by Audrey that inspired us to make our card today. I absolutely adore it. Next up, we have a super cool card by Shari. I love that she used some watercolor there to highlight her house on that speech bubble backdrop. This card by Shari is so cute. It uses the peekaboo backdrop. And so when you open up those little windows, you get extra little scenes there. And I love the little pumpkin patch with the bats above it. Here is a really cute card by Elena where she used the stitched hillside backdrop and she used the snowy backdrop to create her really cool sky. I love this card by Elise. That spooky purple sky is just gorgeous. And then this card by Elise is so cute. I love that she's got the trick-or-treater eek in those little word bubbles with our tiny trick-or-treaters. This card by Kristen is so cute. I love that she highlighted her scene by creating a gap in her white cardstock. Absolutely gorgeous. That inked background by Letitia is stunning on the wood grain cardstock. This card by Megan is so fun. I love how she combined an older Halloween set with our cute little costumed kids with the spooky houses in the background and a really fun reveal wheel card. This card by Nicole is just beautiful. Her inking, oh my goodness. I also love the way that she colored her houses in. And then this card by Yanea is the one that inspired us to make our card today. I love how she added that really cool village die cut in the background. I cannot wait to see what you guys create with these new products, so you have to share it with us. Also, if you want to see some more videos, you can click there below, and you can also click to subscribe or learn a little bit more over at lawnfawn.com. So thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!